In a comment from teacher Carlos Honest of Durham College, I've spent my whole life constructing a specific perspective on the world, and now that thought is being addressed, I invite it since it is how we advance in science. James Webb is upsetting nearly everything in cosmology that has been acknowledged as evident for as far back as a century. Another ultra-deep picture affirms that we have made mistakes in stargazing. The telescope that should uncover us the first stars of the universe is obliterating the earlier perspective and may introduce a new science. Not all analysts are frightened by the new data. Numerous researchers welcome the changes since it has long been obvious that something was amiss with our past speculation. The irregularities in estimating the universe's growing speed ought to have awakened scholars quite a while back. Rather than appropriately reading the signs, they stuck to obsolete ideas. The cosmic microwave background radiation, CMBR, is thought to be the oldest in the universe. The CMBR was formed around 380,000 years after the Big Bang, when the universe had cooled adequately for electrons and protons to form stable hydrogen particles. Specialists refer to this change as reionization, and it made the universe penetrable to light. The CMBR was found in 1964 by American physicists Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. While they were developing another kind of receiving antenna, they saw a consistent noise coming from all directions overhead. This revelation was for a long time viewed as one of the most convincing pieces of proof supporting the theory of how things came to be. Penzias and Wilson shared the Nobel Prize and made history in astronomy. The CMB most probably gives a brief look at the youthful universe. Minuscule temperature changes give huge data about the conditions in the universe not long after the Big Bang. Researchers utilized the CMB to gauge the universe's extension rate, among other things. Edwin Hubble, an astronomer, had already made this calculation in the late 1920s. Hubble found that far-off galaxies were receding from us, this way and that, with speed corresponding to distance. Today, we refer to these measurements as the Hubble rule or the Hubble constant. Of course, Hubble didn't yet have the advanced measurement techniques that were used many years later. When the CMB was discovered, analysts recalculated the rate, and the new figure is considerably lower than Hubble's original estimate. Later, researchers recalculated the rate using type IIA supernovae as the standard candles. Astronomers approached such steady light that it could be used as a trustworthy measuring point. The error in determining the universe's extension rate has existed since the 1990s. From that point forward, analysts have known, or rather, thought, that something was wrong with the evaluation of the CMBR, the measuring techniques, or the idea of cosmic expansion. The S8 pressure or Hubble strain refers to the difference between the different estimated measurements of the universe's extension rate. This has broad repercussions, beyond a simple estimation contrast. The many revelations uncover significant insights into how we have recently perceived the universe. For quite a while, researchers were confused. Since its commencement, the James Webb Space Telescope has given researchers some surprising results which may now illuminate the problem of the universe's extension rate. Galaxies so old and mature that their beginning probably happened before the Big Bang are completely in conventional science and astronomy. There could be no longer any debate about measurement irregularities. Rather, scholars are discussing the most difficult issue in contemporary cosmology. Not only could the universe's expansion speed be wrong, but the whole idea of expansion, or the Big Bang, is being tested. Webb's photographs reveal evidence of a world that is unfathomably different from what we have long accepted. The strain served as an early warning, and all scientists who continue to believe in obsolete hypotheses now face a test. Do we actually know anything about the universe? Numerous researchers are now standing on the rubble of their all-consuming purpose, gazing into space despondently and unable to comprehend the way things are playing out. Given the ongoing scientific dilemma, we should ask ourselves, what do we really know about the universe? To address this question, we must first understand how science works. Hypothetical researchers use a complicated network of mathematical models, exact data, 
and insightful thinking to arrive at conclusions, going from general to specific. Their expertise depends on a mix of observed events, experimental data, and broad theoretical investigation. The name theory alone demonstrates that these are models and ideas, not facts. We only have practical knowledge as pictures from telescopes, sound waves, and radiation caught by radio telescopes. Also, the latest data from neutrino measuring systems or gravitational wave detectors. With the James Webb Space Telescope, we now have equipment at our disposal that allows us to break down the earliest light into individual frequencies and analyze it in ways that were previously impossible. Webb can show us which elements were dominant in galaxies long ago, how much mass was contained, and how many stars there were. This shows the telescope can rebuild a galaxy's structure and direction of travel. However, Webb might have imperfections in some of its photographs due to large accumulation plates. The telescope can't tell us whether we are looking at galaxies or black holes that shine as brightly as galaxies. We must face the fact that our science has long accepted too many possibilities as facts while disregarding alternative explanations. Research has long been sure that it is right. The latest discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope provide essential signs for replacing old ideas with new insights, as has happened many times in science. Researchers are currently anticipating the new results, which are extremely strange, and it seems impossible for many scientists to come up with new understandings right now. The new discoveries are testing the basis of modern physics, which panics many scientists. Today's physics courses are mostly based on Isaac Newton's discoveries in the 17th century. For hundreds of years, his principles of motion and gravity served as the foundation for our physical understanding of the real world, including the universe. Newton's rules explained the movements of objects under normal circumstances and worked well on Earth. In space, however, his ideas needed to be extended, which Albert Einstein significantly cultivated at the turn of the 20th century. His special theory of relativity, published in 1905, changed our perspective on reality. Einstein showed that space and time are interconnected with each other and depend on the movement of the observer. The general theory of relativity, published in 1915, developed the idea by providing mathematical proof of gravitational anomalies based on the curvature of space-time caused by masses like stars or galaxies. Einstein's theories and ideas were mostly firm at this point, but he approached his limits. Throughout his life, the scientist knew that his speculations could never be adequate to describe the whole universe. He expected to find the universal equation, but he did not succeed. Curiously, no other analyst has succeeded right up until now. Where's the mistake? Wouldn't it be interesting to know where the mistake is? Michio Kaku, a prominent space expert from the U.S., stated in an interview that the person who answers this challenge will undoubtedly win the Nobel Prize. Let us investigate what facts researchers might have overlooked, where they may have confused events, and whether our telescopes are to blame. Dark matter and dark energy are among the most reasonable sources of the cosmic disaster. Our current hypotheses of the cosmos integrate the possibility that dark matter and dark energy together account for around 95% of the universe. However, neither has ever been directly observed, so their actual presence has never been established. Perhaps they don't exist at all, and we should explain the universe's expansion and galaxy dynamics independently, or both have properties that we don't yet understand. One hypothesis now being discussed is that the physical properties of the two dark components have evolved over time, which could suggest that we are dealing with some form of intelligence. The next thing to be tested is gravity. This force, which probably causes attraction or bending in space-time due to mass, has yet to be fully demonstrated. Einstein is fundamentally responsible for the concept of space-time curvature, which has been repeatedly confirmed. However, we can't exclude the possibility that gravity has entirely different characteristics than previously thought, or that the gravitational force between objects is caused by a different mechanism. Some constants known as big constants have been established in modern cosmology and astronomy over the years. 
These constants are generally reliable because they rarely change. Computations have revealed that slight fluctuations in these supposed constants bring new energy into the universe, allowing us to explain a variety of events without the presence of dark energy. It is also possible that our interpretations of the redshift of light are incorrect and that we have been measuring incorrect distances within the universe and determining the universe's ages for a long time. Perhaps our beliefs about the universe's initial state were equally mistaken. We may have misread the cosmic microwave background radiation. It's also possible that the universe can't be traced back to a single starting point. This would mean that the theory of how things came to be is mistaken. Despite our advanced technology, we can't exclude minor errors in the Webb telescope or other observational instruments. In the midst of the crisis, experts and researchers agree that errors in instrumentation, data processing, and interpretation are always possible. The field of cosmology stands at a junction today, where the foundations laid over hundreds of years are being challenged by groundbreaking observations and data from cutting-edge instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. These challenges not only question established theories but also open up pathways for completely new understandings of the universe and its origins. One of the central pillars of modern cosmology is the concept of the Big Bang, which suggests that the universe began from an extremely dense point and has been expanding since. This hypothesis has been supported by various lines of evidence, including the cosmic microwave background radiation, CMB, the Hubble constant measurements, and the distribution of galaxies across the universe. The discovery of the CMB in 1964 was a turning point in cosmology. It provided solid evidence for the Big Bang theory by showing a uniform glow of radiation across the sky, which is believed to be the afterglow of the hot, dense early universe when it first became transparent to light. This artifact radiation has since been studied extensively to understand the creation, age, and geometry of the universe. However, recent observations and measurements, especially from the JWST, have posed significant challenges to this established framework. The JWST, with its exceptional responsiveness and resolution, has begun to reveal galaxies and phenomena that defy traditional explanations. For example, the discovery of galaxies that appear surprisingly old raises fundamental questions about the timeline of cosmic evolution and the processes leading to the formation of stars and galaxies. Additionally, Discrepancies in the measurement of the universe's expansion rate, known as the Hubble strain, persist despite decades of refinement in observational methods. While the CMB-based measurements suggest a certain rate of expansion, independent measurements using type IIA supernovae as standard candles yield somewhat different results. This discrepancy hints at possible flaws in our understanding of either astronomical distances the nature of dark energy driving the universe's acceleration, or both. Dark matter and dark energy remain mysterious components of the universe, containing the vast majority of its mass, yet resisting direct detection. These enigmatic substances are invoked to explain observed gravitational effects on galaxies and the accelerated expansion of the universe. However, their exact nature and properties continue to elude scientists, prompting various theoretical and experimental efforts to uncover their identities. In addition to these theoretical challenges, the JWST has provided stunning, clear line-of-sight evidence of phenomena that challenge our current understanding of cosmic history. Images of distant galaxies, some of which existed only two or three hundred million years after the Big Bang suggest a complex and rapidly evolving early universe that may require new theoretical frameworks to fully understand. The JWST's ability to analyze the spectra of light from these ancient galaxies offers insights into their composition, star formation rates, and even the presence of heavy elements necessary for the formation of planets and life. These observations not only advance our understanding of galaxy formation but also raise intriguing questions about the conditions under which life could arise in the universe.